everybody. Um, out here today at we're at we're at Red Rock Canyon again. Uh, I actually come out here a lot to shoot, and part of the reason is because it's close to home, and there's a lot of interesting things to shoot. But uh, biggest reason, whew, sun is really bright, is just look at the scenery here. I mean. Can you really beat that? I don't know. This is some amazing scenery. This is... It's so nice out here. I love it. But... I want to talk to you guys today about something very specific. And that being... You can kind of tell... You can kind of tell by just looking here. I'm out right now. It's kind of the middle of the day. It's about 1 o'clock in the afternoon. And... I'm going to get some shots. Now... For a lot of you guys, you're, you're probably in a similar position to me where you don't get the opportunity to shoot around sunset and sunrise like most landscape photographers do. Um, you know, I've got a, a family job, you know, a wife, kids, and I just don't get the opportunity to go out and shoot at the times of day that I want to very often. So uh, I've had to sort of learn as I go and figure out how to make the most of this situation. So I want to talk to you guys today a few little things that I've picked up that will help you to get good shots in the harsh midday sun. When I shoot during the day I find it always works best if I shoot black and white. Uh, the reason for that is because when you shoot black and white a lot of times it looks really nice in the harsh midday light because you want that contrast. So you're gonna get you're gonna get a lot of really bright areas, a lot of really dark areas, and that tends to work really nicely in black and white. So plan to shoot black and white. We have these three sort of dead Joshua trees here. And You can see here we've got one, two, three. We've got these three dead Joshua trees. And I was thinking about trying to shoot all three of them. And sort of, I'm sorry, it's, it's kind of windy here. Um, I was thinking about trying to shoot all three of them and use them as sort of a leading line up to the mountains somehow. And it just wasn't working out. So uh, I decided to go a little bit more simple. And when you're shooting out in the middle of the day, simple tends to be really good. Uh, let me show you guys what I have here. Hopefully this will, hopefully you'll be able to actually see this a bit. All right, you probably couldn't see that very well. It's, it's really bright out here, so the screens are really hard to see, but I'm just shooting this one Joshua tree. It has a really interesting shape. Uh, there's really nothing behind it except for the mountains that are way off in the distance. So I'm gonna get some nice, some nice blur effect on those. And I'm setting it up so it, that it's, it's gonna break the horizon. Uh, that's another thing I've, I, I've kind of come to enjoy with daytime black and white, especially when you don't have a lot of clouds in the sky. Uh, I like using an object to break the horizon because it just gives it that little extra feeling of depth, you know? And, I don't know, I just I just really enjoy it. So, that's where we're going to shoot. That's going to be our first shot. And, uh, yeah, we'll put that in black and white and hopefully you guys enjoy it.
when you're shooting out here during the day, you want to try and find, like I said, simple compositions, but you want to find areas where the, the subject is being lit a little bit more interesting. So somewhere where the, the sun's not just directly above it or something like that. So what I've got here is the side of that mountain. So the side of this mountain, the, the sun is kind of hitting it on an angle, so it's being side lit, which gives it a lot of interest. There's a lot of there's a lot of little pockets of light and shadow and it's just really interesting to look at. So again, in black and white, I think that's going to look really cool. And that kind of brings me to another thing here where which is uh another thing to look for if you're shooting black and white landscapes is texture. Obviously, you want the lighting to be a little bit unique, a little interesting like that. Uh, but you definitely want texture. And when you're looking at the side of a mountain like this, just bare rock like that, there's so much texture that you can pull out of a shot like that. So I'm going to take this and obviously we're going to take it home, edit, the, edit that into black and white, and I'll, uh, I'll show you guys. I'm gonna break my rule about the simple composition real quick because I just found <laughs> this dead tree just laying on the ground. The shape was so cool. It's in just the right position for me to use it as a foreground object. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. two last shots that I want to get before we get out of here. So we've been just kind of wandering around for a little while and uh, you can kind of see here behind me, maybe. Uh, we're still quite a ways from actual sunset, but because we're up so close, let me turn you guys around, hopefully that helps with the wind. Because we're so close to the mountains right here, uh, the sun actually dips behind the mountains long before sunset. So. Uh, that's about to happen, so I want to get a couple of more, a couple more shots before that sun actually dips behind the mountains. So let me get these shots, and I'll show them to you here real quick. Okay, so we got something I think really unique here. We've got a Joshua tree here that's just, just by itself. I mean, look, there's, there's no other Joshua trees around here. Nothing. Just this one. So we're gonna shoot that. Now we do have the cars in the background, so we're gonna have to edit those out. Don't get mad, you guys. But we also have, um, I don't know if you guys will actually be able to see it, so we do have a, a moon kind of coming up there. Yeah, I don't know if you can see it or not. But uh, we do have the moon kind of coming out in the blue sky up above it. The texture of the Joshua tree with the side lighting that it's getting along with the moon up there in the sky and a little bit of clouds. And uh, yeah, I think that's gonna make a really nice black and white image. There is a, I don't know if you can see that. I'm sure you can hear it. There's a search and rescue helicopter flying by really low right here. Look at this. There he is. Red Rock Search and Rescue. Anyway, we've got a nice isolated subject with with some decent side lighting. We've got texture. We've got interest in the sky. We're gonna break the horizon with the uh, with the uh, Joshua tree there. So I mean, this one is checking all the boxes here. I think this is gonna be a really cool image. So 
we'll just have to snap this one and we'll see how it turns out. This is what I want to do for, not so much the sunset, I guess, but for, uh, as the sun is just going to break these mountains here in just a minute, this is what I want to shoot. I found this really interesting, I don't know what you'd call it. I don't know what you'd call this. It's almost like little Joshua tree graveyard I don't know like there's so much interesting stuff in here you have the uh, the dead trees here a few of them over here you've got you've got new stuff that's growing in but all of these dead trees are all kind of pointing that direction they're all kind of leaning over out toward the mountain and right toward the sun. So I'm hoping these things will kind of create a nice foreground object, but also give you sort of a leading line out to the mountains and the sun that's gonna be, when I shoot, I'm gonna have to wait here a little bit, but when I shoot, it's gonna be just peeking over the mountain and it should be great, but we got a little bit of time to wait until that happens, so let's wait. Back in the car now, got everything all packed up, and I would have I would have done this out in the field here, but uh, you can probably tell just by looking at my eyes, uh, they're pretty red right now because the wind out there is crazy. It's just it's just been blasting me. So I got dirt and all kinds of stuff in my eyes. I'm sure the camera has got dirt and sand and stuff, so I'm gonna have to clean that. But I had a lot of fun out there today and we shot a lot while the sun was still pretty high in the sky and i do that pretty often because it's really the only time that i get to go out and shoot i gotta make do so plan to shoot for black and white plan to shoot for black and white first off that that's going to kind of set the tone for you if you know that you're going to shoot for black and white um, it's going to change a lot of the things that you look for. You want to look for high contrast. Secondly, you want to isolate your subject. Don't always shoot for having a nice foreground and background and all that. Sometimes, especially in these kind of situations, simple is better. Keep things simple. Hopefully you guys got some use out of that. Uh, it's just a few little things that I've kind of picked up along the way through trial and error so hopefully those help you if they did please give this a thumbs up i would really appreciate it it really helps out and subscribe for more uh more little tips and tricks that i'm learning as i go here and just to see more landscape photography vlogs so yeah again hopefully you guys enjoyed until next time guys take it easy